الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessing us with the blessing of remembering him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ أَعَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَأَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala male or female no, you know they will get the reward عليك السلام yeah those who remember Allah either male or female, young or old, they will get reward beyond description. Maghfiratan, forgiveness, no question asked, and the reward, Allah described it as azima, massive, great, huge reward. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who always remember him, always come to the masjid, always pray on time, always be thankful and grateful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and protect our family. And as I said before, this is $10,500 donation just coming for this half an hour, one hour to the masjid. And every year goes up because this is the cost of Hajj. <laughs> yeah? The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever goes to the masjid to learn something or to teach something, they are equal in reward. Yeah? They will have the reward of Al Hajj. Al-Muhrim Hajj in Ihram It's not Hajj of thinking about it Not Hajj who paid the ticket not hajj. No, no, Hajj already Getting the reward of Hajj May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from them Yeah. So coming to the masjid The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said The minute you intend The minute you intend to go to the masjid Every step count You make wudu, all your sins fall with the wudu You walk in the masjid And Allah will send Angels to make dua for you, for all of us. While we're sitting in the masjid. Allahumma ghafir lahu, Allahumma rham. Oh Allah, forgive them. Oh Allah, have mercy on them. Today, <coughs> the, sub <laughs> the, the subject in the group, it says, MashaAllah. Yeah, so, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. I, I was just saying that we put the uh, announcement in the group about coming to the family program and what is it about? It's about fried chicken. Oh. <laughs> yeah? It says the false love for fried chicken. And the idea behind this is, is a lecture by brother Yahya Ibrahim. Yahya Ibrahim is a scholar in Australia. He was in the US before. He's an Egyptian brother. He's, he's giving a counseling workshops about families, matters. And he's saying that our love for each other should not be like the love for the fried chicken. We love fried chicken because it makes us feel good. We don't love the chicken like compassionate and feeding it and nourishing it and care about it. Yeah? No, no, we love it because it makes us feel good. And that is, he calls it, this is the Hollywood love. It makes me feel good, it makes me look, but it's, now we're studying about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and his family's love. And we will see what his wife, radiallahu anha, said, all his wife said about him. And what he said about them. It's just amazing. So our beautiful religion is about our life. Wallahi, it is about make, giving meaning to our life. We talk today about Khadija radiallahu anha. Yeah? Khadija radiallahu anha is the first wife of the Prophet Sallallahu And... She is from Quraysh also. She meets with the Prophet Sallallahu in the fifth or the sixth generation. So they are from the noble people of Quraysh. Khadija bint Khuwailid. Yeah? Bint Asad. Khuwailid, her father was from the noble people of Quraysh that there is narration about him that he was one of the dignitary from Mecca to went to Yemen to celebrate their victory against the Abyssinian army. It tells us a lot that she is from a very elite, noble house also. For the dignitary, one of them is her father, it's just a massive thing. And we know that she was very, very, very rich woman. Very noble woman, very rich woman, very wise woman. They used to call her at tahira the pure one. 
before Islam. Yeah, the Prophet ﷺ married Khadija before Islam. She was called the chaste woman, the pure woman, the wise woman. And she hired men. We're talking 1,400 years ago where the woman was a property. If the husband dies, she becomes inheritance, you know. She just moves with the, with the furniture. Not only in Arab Arabia, the whole world. Islam came and gave the woman the right to keep her name, the right to keep her money, the right to run business, the right to decide for who to marry, the right to buy and sell, the right to be asked and mashura, the right to witness a contract. 1964 in uh, Western Europe they give the woman the right to write in front of, to sit in front of the bus. They were not allowed to. Election 1964. When subhanallah they talk about Muslim women. So Khadija radiallahu anha was amazing name, huge figure in before Islam, in the history of Islam. The Prophet وسلم, from the age of twelve he started to work as a shepherd, sallallahu alayhi wa and this was normal. In old days, there were no adolescents. They were childhood adults. They, no, they didn't have that luxury. Why? Because we said up to the last hundred years ago, there were no vaccination. There were no clean water to drink from the tab is all filled. No. There were wars, there were famine, there were plagues that wipes out 30, 40, 50 million people. Yeah, this was the empire's time. You know, the black plague in, in Europe and Asia, it's just massive history figures true that average age of men was 37 years old. We cannot apply what we have now on them. It's just very wrong to have what we have now and apply. It says, why don't they do that? What? <laughs> Come on, listen, understand. They lived in a very different life. They didn't have the luxury to go. They no schools like this, you know. So the Prophet ﷺ is working from 12 years old, responsible, mature, spending on the family. Because he's orphan, no father, no mother, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Then Khadija's sister called Hala. So Khadija has, we said her father is a very noble man. His name is Khwailid. Khwailid is a very noble man. It's good to see you. So, so Khadija's father is Khwailid. He has family also. Yeah? One of them is called Nawfal. And one of them is called Al Awam. Yeah? This is family of Khadija. Anha. So when we hear of Waraqa ibn Nawfal, oh, that's a cousin. Hakim ibn Hizam, oh, that's a cousin. So you know the names, these are family, noble families. Her cousin, Hakim ibn Hizam, is the only human being that was born in the Kaaba. <laughs> His mother was, you know, so pregnant about the time to give birth, she visited the Kaaba, happened there. They brought the man and they just, she did it there. Hakim, the only human being to give birth in the Kaaba. And he was incredible man also. They call him just a very, very, very kind, mature, wise, loved by all Quraysh, noble man. And he loved the Prophet ﷺ so much. Before Islam, we're talking before Islam. And Hakim ibn Hizam did not accept Islam. The Prophet ﷺ get the message, became a messenger, stay 13 years in Mecca, travel, you know, to Medina, sit 8 years in Medina, and Hakim was not even the best friend, like Abu Bakr. He did not accept Islam. Because of the, some issue, I'll, I'll tell you about in a minute. But look at the love Hakim have for the Prophet ﷺ. He loves the Prophet ﷺ so much, he found a coat that belongs to the king of Yemen. Hakim, in some auction or some sales and market, he find something that used to be worn by the king. And he find the price was 50 dinar, 50 gold dinar. That is a huge amount of money. He bought it, he says, I will buy it as a gift for Muhammad. The Prophet is in Medina at the time. And Hakim is not Muslim, he is not Muslim. 
Subhanallah, look at the love you have. He buys it 50, he pays 50 dinars. This is a huge amount of money. And he takes the coat and he travels to Medina and gives to the Prophet. ﷺ. He's narrating this. The Prophet wore it and gave khutbah, it was Jum'ah. He says, I have never seen more beautiful scene than the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu wearing this. But after the Jum'ah, all the crowd finishing, he said, he see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi giving it to Usama. Usama ibn Zaid. And Hakim was really, says, what is this man? He's giving something worth a million dollars just as a gift to somebody. <laughs> so he goes and question it. Usama, Usama was was like a slave in old days. His father was, you know, a slave. He said, Hakim is a noble man, he's not Muslim, and he's questioning, how he Muslim, he giving a million dollar jacket to this slave? So they said, he is better. Usama, in the sight of Allah, is better than the king of Yemen, and Usama's father is better than the father of the king of Yemen. <laughs> he is more worthy of wearing this. So Khadija, we're talking about Khadija radiallahu anha. And the relationships, yeah? She, she has the cousin, Hakim. She has the cousin, Waraka. Who is Waraka? Cousin, yeah? What's, what, yeah? Khadija's cousin. Well, who is he? He is the scholar. He is the one that studied all the scriptures before. When the Prophet Wasallam saw Jibreel, the Prophet Wasallam didn't know who Jibreel is. He runs home. The Prophet Wasallam runs home terrified. He says to Khadija, Khashitu ala nafsi, I'm so concerned for my sanity. I don't know what's going on. And Khadija says, Oh, subhanAllah. And that's why I say the message is not about fried chicken. You know? If you go that and say that to your wife, she calls 111. <laughs> She's telling you, come on, just go and, you know, have a, have a panadol, <laughs> have a rest. Khadija, subhanAllah, what Khadija said, you can write in the books. She's talking about her husband. 1,400 years ago, he is, he is worried, he is concerned, he is afraid. And look at the, what, what, subhanAllah, look at the love she's have. Why she have this love? She says to him, Kalla, no way. Wallahi, la yukhzik Allah abada. Allah will never humiliate you. Allah will never let you down. Allah will never lead you to face difficulty like this by yourself. Why? Innaka la tahmil kal. You carry the food to the poor and needy. You look after the relative. You are truthful in speech. You are kind in character. You, and she's describing her husband. And not only that, she takes him by the hand and goes to Araqa. She doesn't just tell him, go and see a doctor. <laughs> go and check. No, no, no. She takes him and she goes to Waraqa, her cousin. She knows he got the knowledge. He knows about religion. He knows about angels. He's the only one in Mecca that knows. Everybody else is idol worshippers. And she tells him, listen, Ibn Ammi, listen, Ibn Akhik. Listen to your, you know, your nephew, she calls the Prophet Because Waraqa was old man. And he tells him, what have you seen? What have you heard? And he tells him, I have seen, you know the story of the game. This person that came to me and squeezed me tight and telling me to recite. And I said to him, I, I don't recite, what do I, I can't read. How do you want me to recite something I, you know, I don't know how to read. And he says, recite three times. And then he reads the Quran, Iqra' bismu rabbika alladhi khala. And waraqa, old men, Old man, he started to get excited. He says, Allahu Akbar, this is a namus. This is the same one that came to Musa. It's the same description. It, you are being you've been described in the scripture before. You are the prophet of this ummah. I wish I was young. Subhanallah. Waraka said to him, I wish I was young to support you, to be on your side when you have opposition. So this is the family of Khadija radiallahu anha. So back to Khadija, the Prophet sallallahu is working for her sister, Hala, looking after the, sh the shepherd for her sister. Khadija is doing business, selling caravan to buy and sell in Syria in the summer, to buy and sell in Yemen in the winter. This is Rihlat al-Shita'a was Saif. This is how they do business in the old days. 
Mecca Central. Her sister have sheep, so she got rich also, but not as rich as Khadija. So the Prophet ﷺ working for Hala, and one day, Allah's plan, Khadija was there at Hala's place. And the Prophet ﷺ did not, when he heard that this woman in the house only, he, did, he was respectable man. He says it's just embarrassing to go with all those women by themselves. There's no man in the house because Khadija, no husband. Hala, Allah, Allah, what's happening? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell his partner, the one who work with him, bring my salary. Just bring my wages. I'm, I'm shy to go and, you know, be among this woman in this place. Maybe they have some privacy. You bring my, my money. So when the woman is paying to this man, they say, where is Muhammad? He's working also, you know, all this time. Where is he? Why didn't he come to take his salary? He says he's shy to come because, you know, he wants, he wants to leave you in private, you know. This is your privacy. He doesn't want to disrupt you. And now Hala speaks about the Prophet ﷺ. Even though he's not a prophet, Hala is telling his sister Khadija, this is an honest man. This is an amazing, kind man. Never say lies. Always looking after and caring for the animals. Always, oh, and he's telling. And they say this is the moment where the Prophet ﷺ really came in the mind of Khadija. And some, something happened that Khadija is also because she's sending businesses. She say, why can't I hire him to send the caravan? Even though he has no experience whatsoever with buying and selling. All he does is shepherd in, in the desert. But now it's bigger, huge difference. It's just not the same. So he, she sent somebody to ask. And he consulted with his family and says, of course, go. This is a huge jump from just getting a few silver coins with shepherd. This is a share in the business. In the old days, there were no salaries. There were no salary. I will put the money, you put the efforts. That's how it used to be. So she sent him and she promised him double what she gives to anybody. And she sent with him somebody, his name is Maisara. There's so many names tonight, many, many, many names. <laughs> Maisara, Khadija sent him to keep an eye. Just keep an eye, see how he, you know, I heard a lot about him. You look after him, but you are the main man. They say, my son fell in love with the Prophet ﷺ. He just did not see a human being like this. With manners and character and respect and behaviors and demeanor. Just everything about him was just decent. And that's what, subhanAllah, that's what's required from us nowadays. You know, anywhere we go we should have this. That people will say, oh, look at this Muslim, clean. Look at this Muslim, tidy. Look at this Muslim, helpful, kind, generous. So people will know Islam from our behavior. They will never know, you know, it's, all the stuff is online. If the, yeah, it's all the stuff to, to really learn how to pray or what Muslims believe in, it's online. But to see a Muslim, to break that, you know, barrier, they need to see us in action. To see how generous, kind, honest, helpful, caring to anything and everything. That's what the Prophet ﷺ was, wasallam. So Maisara is keeping an eye and he's being so impressed by the Prophet wasallam. They say he became like a slave to the Prophet. <laughs> he just can't wait for the Prophet to want something, he will rush and do it. They finish the journey and Maisara was not only impressed by the character, he's impressed by the skills, by the mind, by the talent, by the business dealing. That not only twice the Prophet, four times, much, much, multiple times of the Prophet that they used to do before, the Prophet ﷺ made in this journey. So when they came to Khadija, obviously my Sarah is just telling her, oh, this is, this is not a normal human being. What he did in the journey, his honesty, his dealing, his respect, his skills. And Khadija had a friend at the time, her name is Nafisa bint Umayyah, and she says to her, why don't you marry him? Khadija was 40 years old. The Prophet was 25. 25 years old, unheard of to be not married 1,400 years ago. You're going to live another 20 years and die. That's normal. So no, it, to keep human existence, they need to marry very young, to have family. To have family, to work in the, in the farms. So 25, why didn't the Prophet ﷺ marry? Because he did not have money. 
he was orphan. He had to really struggle to keep, you know, survival. And he was very chaste, Sallallahu Alaihi He was so self-respect. He was absolutely pious and righteous even from before Islam. So when they asked Khadija, why don't you marry him? She said, I'm 40. He is 25. They said, Nafisa said, don't leave it to me. Give me permission, I'll go and talk to him. He just, leave it to me. So Nafisa went and met the Prophet Sallallahu and told him, why you don't get married? He says, I don't even have a house. <laughs> I'm living in my uncle's house. Who will marry me? I have no land, no money. I'm all, you know, my parents, you know, die very young, had nothing. She says, what about a rich woman that actually she wants to marry you? He says, who's in your mind? She says, Khadija. He says, why would she marry me? Now he gives her the green light. When he answered like this, she said to him, leave it to me. <laughs> leave it to me. And she goes and sort everything out. And the Prophet ﷺ goes to his uncles, Abu Talib. Because he has no father. Yeah? In old days, the tribe, this is, the, this is what makes yeah? identity. Abu Talib, Al-Abbas, and Hamza, the three of them. He discussed with them and they told him, man, this is, <laughs> this is the lifetime opportunity. Who will, everybody wish to marry Khadija. She is the most noble woman in Mecca. And by the way, her brother, Al-Awwam, married Safiya. Yeah, who is Safiya? Who is Safiya? The auntie of the Prophet ﷺ, Hamza, Abbas, and Abu Talib's sister. So they are family already in one direction or another. So they said, this is, you know, this, go for it. We're so proud. We will make us so proud and honored. So he agrees. And they had the nikah. Abu Talib, Ali ibn Abu Talib's father, who was the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, he did not become Muslim. Al-Abbas and Hamza became Muslim later, yeah? But the one, the oldest is Abu Talib. Abu Talib gave the speech in the, in the wedding. And who gave the speech from Khadija's side? Her cousin, Waraka. Waraka ibn Nawfal. He gave the speech that both of them saying how honored and noble and yeah, thanking each other. And then they got married. And the Prophet ﷺ moved in to live in Khadija's house. 25 years old. Yeah? So this where they established the house. A house that was the best house, it is the best house on the face of the earth. Count with me, the Prophet ﷺ and Khadija. Then they had Zainab, Umm Kalthum, Ruqayya, Al-Qasim, Fatima, Abdullah. Count with me. They asked for Ali to come and live with them. Count with me. Az Zubair ibn al-Awam to live with them. Count with me. Zayd ibn Haritha to live with them. Count with me. Abdullah ibn Abbas to live with them. This was a full house of giant names. Every name I said, you can read a book about them. This is the house of Prophet Sallallahu was not just as we think. No, no, this is a real house with young and old and children and leaders. You know, living in that house, Khadija was the mother. The Prophet Sallallahu said, perfect woman, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Asiya bint Muzahim, the wife of Fir'aun. The wife of Fir'aun made it to be one of the best women ever. And Fatima bint Muhammad and Khadija. Ummu Fatima, yeah? So these four women, they just amazing example of how to live this life. The Prophet ﷺ living the happiest life with the happiest family. And the subhanAllah, you can, yeah, the way she speaks about the Prophet ﷺ and the way the Prophet ﷺ honored her and honored her families and honored children, loved the children beyond description. Then the Prophet ﷺ started to get this uh, feeling of he wanted to be by himself and the cool atikaf, seclusion, yeah? We do atikaf in Ramadan. He used to leave Mecca and go up in the cave, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
just just to to ref, what, reflect on the conditions of the children of Ibrahim because he knew this is the this is the Kaaba built by Ibrahim How come the people are worshiping those idols? How come the people are pressing the the poor? How come the people in enslaving each other? And he is not happy about it. And Khadija radiallahu anha, a mother with all these children in the house, with her status as a very noble woman, she used to take the food and drinks and go up to the Prophet And one of the narrations says that she used to stay with him in that cave also, look after him and feed him and give him drinks. Khadija radiallahu anha, and this is two hours minimum to go up and down. <laughs> yeah? And she is now 55. Radiallahu anha. Yeah? Khadija radiallahu anha. And when, as we said, when Jibreel alayhi salam came to the Prophet, sallam, she was the number one support. The Prophet, sallam, what he saw will kill any human being. What he saw, seeing Jibreel in the real form, any human being cannot take it. We cannot take it. We cannot take the, the size, the magnificence, the power of seeing Jibreel in real form in the sky. That the Prophet ﷺ has to run home. And the two surah, Ya Yuhal Muzzammil, Ya Yuhal Muddathir. Yeah? He says, I'm shivering, I'm trim just trembling from what I've seen. Cover me. Cover me up. Cover me up. And she covers him and she comforts him and she supports him. What did you see? And he told her what he see. She takes him to Waraka. She is the first Muslim on the face of the earth. Khadija is the first one. Islam and the honor to women. The first person to become Muslim is a woman. The first woman to learn wudu is a woman. The first woman, the first human to learn wudu is a woman. The first human to pray behind the Prophet is Khadija. All this Khadija. Khadija learned the wudu, Khadija prayed behind him in front of the Kaaba. And the one who joined them is Ali. The Prophet and Khadija and Ali they used to go and pray. And people said, it's only three of them, you know, don't worry about it. It's only three. They thought that we only stay three of them to pray. Yeah? So Khadija radiallahu anha, is just incredible name in our history. With all this nobility, with all this richness, with all this wisdom, the whole of Mecca started to oppose yeah, Islam. They don't want Islam to spread. So what they did? They did the sanction, the boycott. They banned anybody to deal with them, to buy from them, to sell from them. And not only that, I want to, we're talking about the, the family, yeah? the, the wife of the Prophet as a, as a mother, as a woman, as a wife. Imagine that her two daughters, Umm Kalsum and Ruqayya, were planned to be married to Abu Lahab's sons. Abu Lahab was a noble man, he's the uncle of the Prophet. When Islam started to spread, the family forced the boys to divorce the girls. Just for Islam. We don't think about this, the pain and the suffering that Khadija went, went through, that her own two daughters and also daughters is more difficult than, you know, in, imagine the old days and the old culture and it was done in a very harsh way. So this also was hard. When they were divorced, this is painful. Few maybe months later, Uthman marries Umm Kalthum. And where he goes, sorry, Ruqayya, where he goes? He goes to Abyssinia. Her own daughter, she doesn't even know she's going to see her again. This is the price they paid. This is the feeling they had. This is the difficulty they faced. And they did it perfectly to get Islam to us, to bring Islam to us, to hand Islam to us. So Khadija didn't have an easy life, did not have an easy life. All those people in her family, she's looking after the Prophet Sallallahu She is actually financing Islam. She's actually spending money on all the da'wah, all the project, all the new Muslim. With all this, the kuffar make the, boy, the boycott, the sanction the Muslim, and they had to leave Mecca. They could not even live in their home. It was dangerous. They had to, the whole tribe of Banu Hashim to leave and go and live in the, in the Shi'b, in a valley somewhere. 
Khadija, of course, with the family, with the, even though she's not from Banu Hashim. But it was a great plan from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because, because of Khadija with them, her tribe used to send food at night. They said, look, the boycott is against Bani Hashim. This is not Bani Hashim. This is from Bani Asad. This is not the same tribe. Khadija, we owe her this money. So especially Hakim ibn Hizam, anhu, he became Muslim later, of course. He used to load the camels with food at night time and just go down the way to the valley and just let go. And the Muslim in, in this valley, they will survive weeks on that camel with all the food on it. Otherwise, they used to eat leaves. They used to eat nothing. They used to hear them crying from hunger. They used to hear them. So this was how long? Do you know how long they lived in the valley with all the sanction and pressure? Three years. The most noble family on the face of the earth. The Prophet Wasallam and Khadija and all the family. By the way, Ibn Abbas was born in the Shab. Abdullah ibn Abbas was born in this place. Three years in the suffering. And that's one of the reasons when they came back to Mecca, Khadija became very sick. You can imagine three years of freezing cold and dirt and dust and sickness and no nutrition and no enough food and sadness and pressure. She became very sick and died very soon after that. She passed away. And when she passed away, there were no Salat Janazah. It was not, uh, the, you know, it was not taught yet. It was done in Medina. So the Prophet Sallallahu is the one who buried her. He went down in the grave with her and he was down in Al-Mu'alla. It's a walking distance from, from the Kaaba. You pass by it all the time. You used to have big domes and stuff. It's no more. So this is called the saddest year for the Prophet Sallallahu life when she passed away. And he never forgot about her. He was 52 when she passed away. He lived all this time with her. He didn't marry anybody else. And this was very normal. It was very normal to marry many women. It's actually the moral act to do. The, the morals and the ethicals. And the good thing to do is to marry more women so you can look after them. You can spend on them. You can house them. You can protect them. It's nothing to do about male dominance. It's just about the way this what the life is. This is the way of life. You have to look after them and feed them. Because, the, as I said, there were so many difficulties. There's so many these wars and attacks and ambushes. And there were disease and plagues and famine and droughts and lots of things. You have to be their man and go, see, yeah, I'll marry her. Yeah? And the Prophet Sallallahu whoever he married, was just to look after them and protect them and defend them and have this relationship becomes Ahl al-Bayt, becomes protected by the all the Muslim Ummah. So the Khadija anha passed away in that year and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spent really, he used to be, they say they haven't seen him smile for many, 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 many months after that. So inshallah we we we'll stop there today and we we'll continue to talk about the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the daughters of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the next few weeks. Jazakum Allah khairan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our iman and taqwa, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve our iman, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us reason for success and happiness wherever we are. Jazakum Allah khairan.